Batch processing is key to a lot of businesses or those wanting to set up a new business. It often means larger sources of income or more sustainable sources of income to help finance your business. Now, at the end of the day, the more efficient you can be in doing these batch production runs, it means one of two things. You can either make more profit from the job or you can be more competitive with the pricing in order to win more work. Now, before we dive into things that you can do to improve your efficiency, there is one key rule you must remember before doing any of this. Seconds add up to minutes, minutes add up to hours, hours add up to days. If you look at something and you think, that's only going to save me a few seconds, it's not worth the effort, you're already losing the battle before you have begun. So remember that for everything we're about to cover. So just to give you some context, this is one job that I get in pretty much every year, making these casting blocks out of acrylic. They're for testing different types of cement. Now, ultimately, I do make my own life easier by ordering most of the parts already pre-cut to size. However, there are still over 100 parts every batch and some of those parts have to be cut double-sided. So it really is a lot of machine work. Now, in terms of trying to make things efficient, the best place to start is actually with your designing. Now, everybody designs in different ways, everybody uses different software, so I'm not going to try and dive into individual ways that you can improve on your particular software. But the best piece of advice I can give is learn the shortcuts of your software. The more shortcuts that you can ultimately learn, the more time it is going to save you over the duration of your jobs. Now, the next tip I'm going to give you is do not assume your tool pathing is actually efficient just because that's the way the software has done it. Let's take a closer look at the end panel of these. It is a very simple job and I'll explain how just taking a quicker look at your tool paths can actually save you quite a bit of time. So this is a very simple job that I have to machine. It has two recesses for washers and two holes for bolts to go through the middle. Now in terms of doing the tool pathing for these, you will typically put your washers on one tool path and your bolt holes on another tool path. This is very common. And if we look at the tool paths themselves, what we can see is for the washers, it will start in the bottom left for the origin, go to the furthest point away, do washer one, then over to the left for washer two. And this is exactly the same with the bolt holes as well. It will go to the furthest point away to do the first bolt hole and then back to the left to do the second. So the reality is this starts at the origin and it will go one, two, three, four, five, back to the home finishing point. And all of this takes a total of 48 seconds to complete this particular tool path or to complete the job, I should say. Now, if I close this down and open up a slightly different version of this file, what we can actually see is I've broken each washer and each bolt hole down individually, so they stack up on top of each other. So essentially, it will cut the first washer on the right-hand side. It will then cut the bolt directly there before moving over to the left-hand side to do that washer and then do that bolt hole. Now, in terms of tool pathing, this literally would take a few extra seconds to set this up in terms of individual tool paths. But if we take a look at the tool path summary, it has actually saved us 13 seconds on this very small job. So the reality is that saved 13 seconds. It probably actually took me less than 13 seconds to just break it down into those four individual tool paths. And when you multiply that by the 24 times I had to cut that particular piece, well, that in itself stacks up to over five minutes. That's for one simple tool path. You apply that method to more complex tool paths and to the whole entire process. This is where I said earlier that seconds add up to minutes, minutes add up to hours and so on. And ultimately, those little bits can really start to save you some time. And as we're talking about tool paths, if you have jobs that require lots of different tool paths in a certain order, take the time to just give them a sequential numbering system, a one, a two, a three. That sounds really simple, but the amount of time you will actually save not having to think which is the next one or not having to find it in the order of your filing system, again, will just save you a lot of time over the entire process of that batch. So moving on from the software, let's actually start to look at the job itself. Now, the first way that you can really start to save time is preparation. Get all of your materials set up ahead of time. Get all of the tools that you're going to need set up ahead of time. Just doing all these little things is going to make you more organized and ultimately minimize the amount of delays that it takes when you start going, oh, where is this? Where is that? What piece do I need next? 
if you put all the material in order that you need to cut it, it's just going to make the flow from one step to another more efficient. And again, it's that thing that does sound simple on the surface, but when you actually put it into practice, it really starts to add up. Now on your machine itself, one of the biggest things you can do is have something like this, a fixed position for your material. It basically means that every time your material goes into that corner, it is in the exact same position. Not only from a physical sense, but you can also program your CNC machine as well to know where that exact corner is using the workspace coordinates. Now I'm not going to run through it, but there is a link up in the corner to a previous video I did. And ultimately, it means as soon as you turn your machine on, you can let it home itself and from the click of one button it will know exactly where the corner of your material is. None of that jogging looking is it in the right position, just perfect alignment every single time. And this literally means that once a piece is done you can take it out, put the next one in and you're ready to go for the next cut. It's also worth mentioning you can have multiple of these fixed positions programmed into your CNC machine. So if you need to run different pieces in different parts of your CNC bed for whatever reason that may be, you can easily set it up to have like one position, two position, three position, and it will remember all those coordinates. And just being able to jog between those different positions really quickly saves you a lot of time, especially when you are doing hundreds of different parts. Now I'm very aware everything looks a bit of a mess behind me and I have some unusual hybrid setup going on. I'm not even going to attempt to explain it, but I will move on to the next point. As well as having fixed positions for your material on the CNC machine and programmed into the memory, one of the biggest things that people overlook is setting up macros. Now the reason for this is macros often do require a little bit of knowledge around G-codes, the correct commands to put in in order to do certain movements. But if you can take the time to learn some of those basics, I promise you macros will save you a huge amount of time. For example, one thing that I do on this acrylic, because it has such a poor tolerance of about 10% plus or minus on the thickness, I literally have to run the Z probe from the surface of it every single time I machine a new piece. So in order to do that, I have to go from the fixed position so far into the material, run the Z probe, and then sometimes come back to the starting position to begin the job. Now doing all those individual movements obviously takes time. My machine is here, the machine is there, so it's a lot of over to one side, over to the other in order to do it. If I set that up as a macro where I just click one button and it goes in so far into the material, runs the Z probe, returns back to the beginning from one click of a button. That is the whole point of the macros. It is speeding things up. And look, I genuinely do get it. Not everybody wants to learn that type of coding or not everyone is comfortable doing that type of coding. But remember, there are a lot of people out there that will help you. Jump onto some of the different CNC groups and just post what you're trying to achieve or maybe send a video of what you are doing. And somebody can probably make that into a macro command for you that you can ultimately save into your control software. And pretty much all control softwares do allow macros. So it's not necessarily software specific. You just need to learn where the relevant ones are to do it in your particular software. And ultimately, any command that you run multiple times throughout the duration of your entire batch process, if you set a macro up for that, you are going to save so much time by just being able to do everything at one click of a button. Next big tip is about dust extraction and keeping things as clean as you can when you are working. Now at the end of every job, if you have to go round and vacuum everything up, obviously that is slowing down the process. Whereas you've got a good dust extraction system in place, it is going to keep things cleaner and ultimately minimize the amount of time you spend cleaning things down at the end. Now unfortunately, acrylic is pretty messy to work with because of the static and it sticks to everything. So as a way to get around that, what I actually did, as well as the dust extractor, was had a second vacuum at the side of the machine. So as I was getting near to the end of the job, I was just vacuuming up those little bits in order to be able to progress much quicker. So basically, the cleaner you can keep your workspace, the faster you're going to be able to change over your parts to move on to the next job. And if you've not used them before, these are one of the best investments that you can make. Remote controlled switches for your dust extractors or your vacuums. 
ultimately from the same position you're working you can control the on and off switch for all your different devices again just saving you time for example this unit typically sits the other side of the workbench instead of me having to go and walk over there every time to turn it on and off in between each job i can just press the button on the remote start it up or turn it off Again, just saving you lots of time that you probably don't even appreciate just going back and forth, turning things on and off. For example, extremely easy. Last but certainly not least is downtime in between things being machined. Obviously, as your machine is running, you don't necessarily need to stand there and watch it 100% of the time. I don't advocate walking away and leaving it unattended, but there are obviously lots of things that you can do in the vicinity of your workshop while still keeping an eye on it. For example, all the acrylic parts I need to machine have this white plastic coating on them, double-sided. I need to peel all that off as I start going through them. Now I could have done this all before starting, but the reality was I knew I would have downtime in between changing the pieces over. So whilst the machine was running, I stood at the side, peeling all of those off. Little jobs that you can do whilst the machine is running. Another example is obviously all of those parts had to be assembled at the end, but the threaded rods, the wing nuts, the washers, all were separate. So I started prepping those ahead of time, speeding the assembly process up at the end. So look for the little things that you can do that do not distract you too much from the CNC and you can do within the vicinity of your workshop. Now, one thing I will stress on this point is do not distract yourself too much from the main job at hand, the CNC machine. For example, you don't want to be rushing around, come back to the computer, click the wrong button and send your machine driving into the material because that's obviously going to cost you a bit, cost you material, potentially damage something that you can't replace. So call way to keep your main focus on the job at hand, but if you can do other things in the process, obviously get them done. So I just mentioned about taking all those plastic pieces off the acrylic. Now if you're doing something like that and let's say you're being is the other side of the workshop. Well, just get a cardboard box and put everything in there rather than chucking it on the floor or leaving it a mess. Obviously, it is much cleaner. You can then just take that over to your bin and empty it that way. Another little tip, as I say, that just saves you a little bit of time. So as I touched on at the start, saving a few seconds here and there does all add up to be able to save you much more time over the entire production run. When bigger companies bring people in to look at their efficiency, they don't often find large sums that they can ultimately make better. They find dozens of little pieces that they can help improve and that covers everything and makes it more efficient in the end. So it's the same principle for us. Now obviously I've shared a few tips with you. If you have others that you think are helpful, let me know in the comments section down below. It is always good to share tips with fellow makers. So I do hope you found the video useful. Thank you all very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I'll see you all on the next episode.